Um, moving to the next one, right? I think people often compare crypto with, with the internet in terms of adoption, right? I think, I think today we are at about 300 to 400 million people that purchased cryptocurrencies, right? Um, and then, you know, if you compare that with, you know, the internet, uh, that's actually quite, quite comparable. Like you will see here that the, the adoption trajectory, it's more or less in line. Um, obviously the question will be if this adoption will, will kind of like follow in the, in the next years, but we are there. And that's actually why people are extremely excited about crypto and, you know, this web three, like the third generation of the internet being built on top of cryptocurrencies, right? So. The other exciting data point, at least to me, is, is this adoption actually is coming on a global scale, right? Um, until a few years ago, cryptocurrencies and in particular Bitcoin were um, predominantly happening in developed markets like US, Europe, right? Where technology is actually arguably is a bit further advanced, right? But what we have seen in the past couple of years has been really like a global adoption of cryptocurrencies, right? A lot of markets that, you know, traditionally would be at the periphery of uh, the financial markets are really jumping on board to this uh, trend, right? You see here, for example, Latin America, uh, Turkey, uh, Nigeria, as well as parts of Southeast Asia, including uh, Indonesia, you see that there is actually quite, if not mass adoption, at least mainstream adoption, right? If you want to collect tax on something, on a transaction, you need to know that the transaction is happening. And who can tell you about the crypto transaction? There are two possibilities. Either the parties involved in the transaction will tell you that, so the seller or the buyer, they will report the transaction or if they are not willing to do it or they are not aware that they should be doing. You may also rely on a third party and a third party would be a wallet provider or an exchange platform because those third parties, they see all these uh, crypto asset transactions. And actually it's very useful to rely on third parties, on third party reporting, because third parties have more incentives to comply. They are businesses involved in the crypto sector. So they, they want to be compliant. They don't want to lose any, any business uh, licenses. So what, what the OECD proposal says is that there should be an obligation so countries should implement an obligation to report crypto transaction to the tax administration. So again, all the platforms, wallets should be obliged to report all the transactions on a regular basis. And then countries should exchange this information. Because as we know, a lot of crypto trade takes place across the borders. So uh, after recognizing that crypto is an asset, an intangible taxable law, what's next? Let's revisit the topic of this seminar, this webinar. The topic of this webinar is that, is the VAT the right option to tax crypto asset? And I'm sorry maybe to disappoint you because in my opinion, the answer is no. Yes, the, op the answer is no, because VAT is not an option. Instead, VAT collection is a consequence not an option of recognizing a thing as a taxable good. Let's revisit our understanding about the AP principles. We have the principle of neutrality, and also this is uh, the common jargon recently, level playing field. When we say something is taxable, we don't have any excuse. We don't have any judgment or reason to not tax it. We have to impose tax on it. And then level playing field. Uh, I will just close it by few expected things which uh, government, our government is supposed to do. One, they are working to distinguish between the cryptocurrency and crypto assets. That's one. Secondly, our GST council has made a committee and this committee is looking to actually uh, put a very higher rate of tax on the crypto transactions 
may be considering them at best wedding casino but i think this is uh, only a media report so i will not give much much weight to this <laughs> then uh, reverse charge mechanism may be there for the services sought through foreign platforms and definitely we all know as indonesia is already working a lot on that valuation of crypto transactions is going to be a challenge though we have got our wonderful valuation rules but even applying those valuation rules to the crypto transactions is going to be a challenge so a lot of experience from a government uh, perspective i would like to start with pak bibing what what are your views on this carve and do you think it will mitigate cross border tax avoidance with regard to crypto assets uh, this is a question to me uh, pak bibing first okay thank you so much uh, for asking the question um regarding the carve or um like a framework that the oecd will uh, create this year i think that's a good that's a good step to uh give like uh, a clear framework so that all oecd members has we don't have to make it the same but at least we have the similar way to um anticipate any tax avoidance but in indonesia uh, we also have this kind of regulation that is uh, created by minister of trade that every um, crypto asset exchangers platform shall report their transaction every day every week every month and every three months so um, every so in this case it is it it's going to be very very um useful for us if we have this um framework in a in 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 broader aspect in the international point of view so we really support this um this effort and i i think the those who also benefit from from a uniform global standard are definitely exchange platform in wallet providers so um currently some countries like indonesia have laws in place to oblige exchange platforms and wallet providers to report crypto transaction but just imagine the situation in which every country enacts different rules requires information in a different format that will be a huge compliance burden placed on exchange platforms and wallet providers especially if you have to do it um, on a very frequent basis like on the weekly or a, or a monthly basis i think this is just a general question of fairness if something is taxable why to give an exact like a de facto exemption to it vat is a broad based tax at least in europe it applies to all services unless something is explicitly exempt there is no exemption it is taxable then i mean the right way is to enforce and collect the tax of on, on nfts unless the government explicitly decides to make it exempt the things which were not happening earlier are happening now even in the commercial world because of the crypto technology so definitely there are transactions and there should be revenue government knows it very well and the only reason why they are i said government is not pushing it as yet there is a tax but people are not pushed to pay the tax so this is not a very happy situation tomorrow anything may come from them so the point here is that they don't have actually the mechanism even to identify how much tax one has to pay like you need an ecosystem to collect the tax how to record the transaction how to value the transaction how to do accounting so if all these things are not there how will you even demand the tax from the other person so i would say that our government actually is uh, lagging behind a little in creating a mechanism to collect the tax but they very well know the huge potential revenue potential here 